welcome to day number four. Welcome to day number seven. Day number 12. Welcome to Do It Heartily. Aloha, welcome to our Christmas edition. Uh, the next couple of videos are going to have to do with Christmas and then after those videos, we are going to uh, end 2020 just with those videos and there's not gonna be any more uh, for either Do It Hardly Junior or the Do It Hardly channel. We're gonna take a nice Christmas break, but you guys are gonna get uh, some packets to work on over Christmas break and so I'll be delivering those a little bit later. Before we jump into God's Word, let's open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now. Just thank you so much for the Christmas season, a time of decorations, a time of spending time with family and friends, uh, exchanging gifts, uh, decorating Christmas trees, singing Christmas songs, and ultimately, most importantly, honoring you and spending time with you. And I pray that your name is glorified and honored above all. And I pray that we all learn something from your word about your birth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, guys, open your Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter number two. Matthew, chapter number two. All right. So at this point in the story, Jesus has already been born. He's actually around two or three years old. Uh, and so, but this does still have to do with the Christmas story. All right. So Matthew chapter number two, looking at verse number 11, the wise men, they have traveled for two or three years to find Jesus. You know, you ever seen a nativity scene? It shows Joseph and Mary, Jesus as a baby, shows the shepherds, and it even shows the wise men that are there. But the wise men that actually didn't show up for another two or three years. So verse number 11, it says, and when they were come into the house, they saw the young child. That also lets us know that this is not in Jesus's birth because there is a big difference in saying young child and baby, right? Or infant. Uh, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother. And we also notice Joseph is not there and says they fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense and myrrh. So we are gonna focus on the first gift and that's what we're gonna focus on for the next three videos uh, are the gifts that the wise men gave. So gift number one is gold. Why would they give gold to a child, right? Uh, but there is significance. Uh, first off, this gold would help finance Joseph and Mary's travel and potentially their life. Remember, these were uh, poor people, right? They, Jesus was born in a manger. They had, couldn't even get in the inn. And uh, so they were not relatively well off in life, but this gold would help them in their travels, going around different, different places. And so that is definitely a huge significance. But the other one is that they gave him gold. What is gold worthy of? Or who is it worthy of? Royalty. Our King. Jesus is our King. Let's look at some Bible verses. I hope you got your Bible ready. First, we go to 1 Timothy chapter number 6. 1 Timothy chapter number 6, verse number 14 says, That thou keep this commandment without spot, un unrebukable, unto the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 15, which in his times he shall show, who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There we see he is the King of Kings. Then go to Revelation chapter number 17, verse number 14. Revelation 17, 14. And again, if I'm going too fast, pause the video, get there, and then, re and then start it again. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. So there we see he again, he is the king of kings. And then just uh, two chapters over, Revelation 19, verse number 16 says, And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And then last but not least, go back uh, a few books in the Bible to Hebrews chapter number 1. Hebrews chapter number 1, verse number 8 says, but unto the Son he saith, 
Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Now, it doesn't say he is the king of kings. It does not even say he is a king. But notice it describes what a king would have. He would have a scepter and he would be living where? In his kingdom. So there it describes him again. So uh, going back to the book of Matthew, chapter number 2. Jesus has described throughout the Bible as our king of kings means no one will oppose him. He will always win. He alone will rule as the king. He is our highest authority. Like imagine a king walking into your house right now. How would you treat that person? How would you treat that king? You would bow down out of respect. You would uh, give them your best food. You would give them the best chair. Whatever was in your house that was the best, you would make sure that that person was treated with respect and comfort, right? So how did the wise men treat Jesus like a king even when he was a child? So let's look at verse number 11 again. And so uh, it says, when they were coming to the house. Now it wasn't like they heard about Jesus, and then the next day they were there. Remember, they heard about Jesus before he was born, and they started traveling, which means they traveled for up to potentially three years to find Jesus because they traveled before he was born, they traveled after he was born, and it took them until he was a young child for them to find him. So number one, they sought him out. That's how we need to be for Jesus as our king. We, you, back in the day when there were alive, you know, real kings like all over the place, when you had a problem or you had an issue or something was going on, you didn't tell a soldier, hey, can you tell the king to come to my house? No, 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 no. You went to the kingdom. You went to the king to talk to him about it. You sought him out. That's what the wise men did. They traveled. They sought him out. We need to do that. We need to seek Jesus out every single day. Why? Because he is our king. Number two, uh, notice in the verse it says, They saw the young child with Mary his mother. They fell down. They bowed down and showed respect to the king. We need to show respect to Jesus. We need to show respect to his word. We need to show respect to his house. So number one, we need to seek him out. Number two, we need to show him respect every single day. Number three, they fell down and they did what? They worshiped him. They spent time with him. They, I don't know exactly how they worshiped him, but we need to do that every single day. We need to read the Bible. We need to pray. We need to praise his name. And so we need to worship Jesus every single day. So they sought him out, they showed him respect, they worshiped him, and then number four, they gave the king gifts. They gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now our gifts don't have to be gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Our gifts can be love. Uh, the fir very first gift was we need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you don't have that, you need to make sure and take care of that today. But love, relationship, give him your time, give him your money, right? We need to make sure we're giving gifts right back to Jesus because of the ultimate gift that he has given us. So why did the wise men give him gold? Because he is our king and he is the king of kings. We need to seek him out. We need to show him respect. We need to worship him and we need to give him our gifts. All right. So uh, the questions are, were already posted at the front. We love you. God loves you even more. Join us again tomorrow as we talk about frankincense and aloha.